What is up guys? I'm Wade Lumsden and welcome to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. Um, today I'm going to introduce you to bootlegger bomber cars. What's a bootlegger bomber is probably what you're asking. Um, in Fallon, Nevada at Rattlesnake Raceway there is a class of dirt track race car called a bootlegger bomber. Okay this thing right here. The quick premise of the class is it is a four-door V8 car. The engine can't be any bigger uh, than I believe a 360 cubic inches. So it's got to be 360 or smaller. And of course, got to be a four-door. So nothing but big boats. <clears throat> and it's got to remain completely stock. When I say completely stock, I mean these engines, if they came with a smog pump on them, the smog pump has to be present. It doesn't have to be hooked up, but it has to be present. So AC compressor still there, uh, alternator still there, all that happy stuff. It's all still there. Um, it, it's a really fun class, really fun to watch, kind of novelty. Um, they do a lot of things that that's really cool first off they race on a really slick racetrack they always go out and water the track which anybody who's been to a dirt track race can tell you after the track has already been raced on as soon as you put a bunch of water down on it it makes it super slick so you slide everywhere bumping into each other it's really cool and speaking of bumping into each other this is a bump to pass class. Not in the fact that you have to bump to be able to pass, but if you're going down the straightaway and you bump the car in front of you, you go through the corner, if they don't get out of your way by the next straightaway, you're allowed to turn them down into the infield. So you could spin them out into the infield. They don't want anybody spinning them out towards the wall, but you can spin them and dump them towards the infield. It's pretty cool and it gets kind of crazy. Um, they've also done some cool things like racing backwards and I believe they're going to do other cool stuff like Le Mans starts, maybe a kidney shaped race, um, maybe a, a pit stop race, things like that. This is a fairly new class so they're still building and coming up with great ideas. The other thing that I love about this class is it's a claimer class. And I'm not just talking about claiming your motor or claiming your shocks. You can claim the whole car. So within the class, there's an $800 claim for the car. You have to pay $800 and trade cars. And that's the claim. After you claim the car, you can pull out your safety equipment and, and things like that. A, a price can be negotiated on those things between the, the drivers if that's so chosen. but. Basically, they get to pull their safety equipment out and they swap cars for 800 bucks. Something else that I think is really cool about this claimer rule is that every single car is for sale for 1500 bucks. That's right. For 1500 bucks, you can get into one of these right away. If you show up, you can make your intentions known that you are going to buy somebody's car for 1500 bucks. They get to keep their safety equipment, and again, you can negotiate a price that includes that safety equipment uh, above and beyond with the driver, but everybody in the class knows that their car is for sale. Somebody out of the stands, a staff member, another pit crew guy, anybody can come and buy your car. It makes it to where nobody wants to put any money into these things, really at all, and it keeps it pretty pure. So this car behind me is going to be our project car. This is going to be our bootlegger bomber. And let me clarify, this is actually going to be my dad's bootlegger bomber car. My dad is somebody who has volunteered and been the president of, a, of Rattlesnake Raceway for a really long time. He's been volunteering there since before I was born. Um, and I believe he's got uh, way more than 16 years of being president under his belt at that track. Um, but he does everything he can 
to especially help me, my brother, our whole family get into race cars and stuff. And he hasn't had an opportunity to drive in an extremely long time. This bootlegger class popped up and we thought it was a perfect opportunity to get him back into a race car. Now our project is actually a 1995 Lincoln Town Car with a 4.6 liter engine in it. I believe that's a 281 cubic inches for you cubic inch guys. Not the biggest motor in the world, but she does get up and go. I got to drive it around the block. Probably shouldn't have, but I drove it around the block a little bit just to see if she had some pep. And let's start this walk around, or at least what walk around I can possibly do. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Kind of why I giggled about the whole walk around thing. Um, as you can see, she uh, barely fits inside my garage, so I can't really walk around it. But I'll show you, to the best of my ability, what we got to work with here. So let's start with under the hood. So in here, we got our 4.6 liter V8, which is 281 cubic inches. As you can see, it's basically stock. This was somebody's daily driver. Before we got it, it was actually donated to my dad to be able to turn into one of these cars. So what makes this class so awesome. You find, a, you find a running car and you can just beat out the windows, put a cage in it, and pretty much go racing with some um, safety gear, right? Uh, but it's got some quirks to it, like uh, this little thing right here. Um, that's actually a switch that you turn on and off from inside the fender well. I guess it had a parasitic draw and the battery was going dead all the time and they weren't able to figure it out. So they just put a disconnect switch. I guess that works. We're going to end up doing that anyways, but the battery and all the power and stuff needs to be reachable by the driver. The battery shouldn't be reachable by the driver, but the switch should. The battery will actually be mounted in the cab um, for safety reasons. You don't want that getting crushed um, and battery acid going all over the place and all that happy stuff. But basically here we are stock engine. We're going to end up trying to put in a front hoop to help protect the radiator and stuff. But other than that, there's not a whole lot that's going to go on up here. Let's go ahead and move towards the cab. I'm going to shut this. All right, so in the cab, you can see that we already got a cage going on in here. It's a four point cage, meaning that it's mounted in four points right now, down here, down here, and same thing on the driver's side. Uh, the driver's door's not welded shut yet, but you can tell it's been completely gutted. And I'll get to that a little bit more here in a second, but you got some awesome door bars here uh, to help protect the driver. And then we're gonna end up having to put in a seat we're going to take out the airbags because I believe the airbags are still in it. And a couple other little safety features that I think that we're, we're going to need for this. We'll end up putting some kicker bars in because there are no kicker bars in the back. The kicker bar is basically a bar that comes from up top here and mounts down near the floorboard somewhere. How far back you go, that's up to you. Usually they go into the trunk. But we got some work to do. But one of the main things that we're going to do first is this car, it was almost out of gas. Yes, the gas gauge works. <laughs> the gauges are all digital, but this fuel cover does not open. It is an electronic open on these Lincolns. There's usually a button on the inside of the door and it goes right about here. Can you see where the electrical connection for that is? Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And it's the exact same thing for the trunk. So the trunk is stuck closed as well. There's actually a default safety inside here somewhere, inside these Lincolns that you can push to get that to open up. But the trunk is also electric. So we're kind of stuck. And no, we don't have a key to the trunk. So we're going to have to get the trunk open to be able to get the lid open to be able to get gas in it to make sure it doesn't run out of gas when we're doing some things 
So with everything that we got to do to this car, it's probably going to take a couple weeks. I'm going to split it up into a couple videos. We have lots to do. I hope you're going to enjoy what I have to show you. And in the end, we're going to have a done race car. It'll probably be a couple months before we get to race it. But when we get to that point, we'll definitely show you the video of it. If you're interested in running a bootlegger car, check out the rules, rattlesnakeraceway.net, rattlesnakeraceway.org. Um, the rules are posted on there. Check it out. It's a really simple, fun, easy class that anybody can start, super cheap. And because it's novelty and a little bit rough, fans seem to love it. Make sure you subscribe and like this page if you like what I'm doing. Comment below um, if you have any questions on what the class is, if you're interested in starting one, if you're interested in building one, whatever. Um, I'll comment back and we'll get back to you, give you as much information as possible. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to cover on this car that I might just be washing over a little bit, make sure you comment on that too. Um, if you think you have any other cool ideas that we can do with it, this is actually a themed car. I don't think I mentioned that before. The bootlegger bomber class is a themed class. Themed bootleggers, right? If you don't know what a bootlegger is, they're the guys that used to, you know, run alcohol during the prohibition days. Uh, so pretty much everybody has got some type of theme related around that, whether it be, you know, Crown Royal, Corona. Um, we had a kid that was 16 years old, joined the class, and he just wanted to be a Pepsi, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be themed around that, but themed cars are the best. We have a cop car, we have a Dukes of Hazard car. There's a bunch of them out there and they always have a good time. I think I know where we're gonna go theme wise with this one, but if you have any suggestions, comment below. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel too so you can follow the build and other exciting things that we do here at Lumsden Motorsports. But uh, we'll get to that type of stuff later on. For now, let's get this car built, huh? All right. We'll see you later, guys.